we start the uh, business owners smashing online meetup on uh, Zoom tonight. So um, fantastic night tonight. We've got Chantal uh, Girardi. Uh, she's going to be um, talking to us tonight about how to get uh, uh, clients for free on Facebook. And those of you who know Chantal uh, know that she's a, uh, a Facebook strategist. She's an expert. She has, she's helped a ton of businesses. Uh, in fact, across Australia, not just Gold Coast and Brisbane, but across Australia to uh, really maximise uh, you know, customer acquisition on uh, Facebook. So she'll be on the Business Owners Smashing Online uh, Meetup tonight, which starts now in about three minutes. And I can see uh, people starting to arrive now. They're all sort of uh, pinging in on the, um, uh, on the uh, link. We'll pop the link down below for you to register. Uh, it's not too late to uh, come along. We've got a pretty full house tonight. Uh, and it's just one of those topics that is um, uh, helpful and valuable uh, sort of at the moment as uh, so many people are uh, you know, either working from home or businesses are changing what they're doing. They're having to uh, uh, get online. G'day Maureen, how are you going? Hiya Tracy. Um, so just saying, we're just about to start business owners smashing online uh, on Zoom. Um, and uh, we're just gonna sort of pop the uh, link in the uh, chat down below. Three minutes to go. We've got uh, everyone starting to arrive on Zoom. It's all about Facebook. Get, um, uh, you know, customers and traffic for free. Uh, so really talking about organic strategies, not paid strategies tonight. Uh, but some of these strategies are what um, uh, some businesses that I work with now grind million dollar businesses out of. So um, so come join us tonight. It, uh, we're, we're about to start and um, I better let all these people in. I'll just leave this uh, live running. Uh, just so, how are you Robin, how are you going? Um, I'll leave the live running here and uh, we'll, we'll sort of turn on the screen. But once, once you see the Zoom link popping down below, Click that and uh, jump in uh, over here, and then you'll get the uh, the full experience. So I'm going to now sort of start letting people in, and uh, hopefully, uh, and then we'll get underway. Okay. All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, that was me just doing the uh, Facebook Live to say that uh, we're about to start. So uh, you caught me sort of uh, in the back of the room uh, when you when you weren't supposed to. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're, we're, we're a couple of minutes away. Uh, Chantal's uh, on her way in. Uh, she's doing sort of um, things like making sure uh, kids are fed and uh, sort of uh, the household's in order before uh, she gets in. But um, before we do get started, uh, maybe just unmute yourself, tell us who's here, and um, just so I know who's uh, on the line today. Well, I'm on mute. Hi, Nick. I'm Dave. How are you? G'day Dave, how are you going? Long time no see, what, it's been a week? Isn't it, a whole week. <laughs> Who else have we got here today? Hi Nick, Chris Shepard mate, how are you? Oh g'day Chris, how are you going? Mate, been a, been a while since I've you. Has been a while, has been a while. Yeah, 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 you keeping well? Yeah, doing well, doing well. Oh, that's the story. Excellent. What about you? You look, you're looking well? Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> It's uh, no, it's been a, it's been a great time actually. It's been uh, very busy. So uh, the digital world is uh, all of a sudden, for some reason, it's taken off. So don't know what's the most important that. part of our world. I know, I know. <laughs> well, the interesting thing is, I don't think it's going to go away anytime soon. So uh, whether we get out of this or uh, or not, I think uh, digital is the uh, way it's going to be for a while. All right, who else are we showing things now? Is the new normal? Just unmute yourself, say hello, let us know who you are, just so hey, I know who's here. Long time no speak, mate. Oh, Ash, Ash. how you going? <laughs> was uh, all of this morning, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just thought I'd pop in my head and say hello. Excellent, excellent. got to go soon, but I just yeah. thought I'd say hi. That's right, and uh, what's your, what, what, what is it you do? Me? Yes. I help business owners grow profitably using online strategies. Awesome, perfect. All right, who else do we have here today? I'm Jenny from Wellington in New Zealand. Aha, uh -huh. I thought I saw a Wellingtonian coming on. <laughs> how are you? I'm really good, how are you? Excellent, excellent. Oh, I love that Wellington accent, eh? <laughs> I actually think that all this um, stuff has actually made people get up to date with their online stuff, which they've been putting off for ages. I think you're right, actually. I know that uh, we've had sort of, uh, people that it's been in the, um, oh, we'll get around to it one day sort of basket, and that day has just come. All right, who else have we got here? Hi, Nick. It's, Chris, it's Christine. I haven't got my video going, but I can see you. 
Oh, hello, Christine. How are you going? Yeah, good. Not quite sure what's happening with it. Yeah, it looks like you've got a uh, virtual background going there and it's sort yeah. of uh, not quite working properly for you. Yeah, hello, Nick. Hello, everybody. It's Martin here for Fuero Gear Cycle Wear and I'm on the Gold Coast. Oh, g'day, Martin. It's been a while oh, since yeah. I've seen you. Yeah, yeah it's or been not. a while, hasn't it? <laughs> Uh, g'day, Nigel. I've got your chat. How's it going? Good, mate. Yourself? Very good. Very good. We're sort of another cracker evening tonight. Yeah, bloody hell, mate. You're doing well with these, eh? They're really interesting. Uh, well, hopefully it's sort of uh, adding something to us all. Yep. All right. And uh, all right. So sort of a couple more shout outs. Who, who else we got here? Hey, g'day Nick, it's Daryl from Alpha LED on the Gold Coast. How are we, oh. everybody? G'day Daryl, how are you going? Yeah, good, thanks. Excellent, good, excellent. Good. All right. How are you, Nick? Oh, g'day Robert, how are you going, mate? I'm well. So, Robert, the, the, the happy accountant. Indeed you are, yes. Excellent. Well, it sounds like you're going to be happy because you can get out of uh, home for a wee while. The... Uh... Hey, no, I've got plenty of work here. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. All right, and uh, we have Chantal here. I'm not sure whether she's actually here or not, but she's going to be sort of uh, with us uh, for 6.30. So uh, we'll get underway uh, and um, crack on. So what I will do is, uh, if I can get this technology working properly, uh, you know me, I'm a tech guy, and uh, it's always tech that trips me up. So... Uh, Let's try and share my screen and uh, we'll see what happens. Okay. And let's go for this one here. And uh, just just uh, let us know you can see the screen. It should say business owner smashing it online. Thumbs up. Cool. Brilliant. All right. Well, welcome along to uh, yet another episode of the uh, online uh, business owners smashing it online. Uh, so for those that uh, haven't been with us before, this is a, um, well, it used to be a live, well, it is a live event still, but it was an in-person event that we ran at the uh, KDV event center or sports center down on the Gold Coast and uh, also up in uh, Murray and Brisbane. So, um, and uh, we were about to head over to Wellington, in fact. So it's good we've got a Wellington person here uh, because we were gonna launch it uh, over there as well too. So it was just a healthy excuse for me to um, head across there uh, when I can. So, um, uh, so now obviously in the current environment, we're uh, all online uh, via Zoom. So um, thanks for all uh, giving up your evening tonight. Well, not all of it, I hope, just from uh, uh, six to 7.30 to, um, Come and join us and uh, learn a bit more about tonight. Uh, it's about uh, Facebook and the topic tonight is how to get uh, customers for free on uh, Facebook. So um, as, as always, uh, the uh, first part of the evening is that uh, is we've got some, um, some apps and some tools, so we'll work through that. But before we do uh, get started, um, just to let you know, the um, Business Owners Smashing Online is a meetup for people that uh, are either in business, they own a business, they run a business, they're thinking about getting into business. And it's uh, all about uh, helping you to discover some of the uh, tools and online capability that's out there. Uh, that's available for business to, uh, to do a couple of things. Uh, one of it is to save money and make money, but more importantly, uh, it's all about uh, saving your time. Because if you can save time, uh, then that time you can um, uh, either use to uh, invest back into the business uh, to create more, or uh, you could use it uh, with your family, you could use it for leisure, uh, because after all, business uh, shouldn't be a 24 hour, um, uh, seven day a week job. Uh, it should be something that we do part-time to support our uh, full-time life. So uh, uh, we're not all there yet, and I know that I still work far too long for the, um, uh, for the hours that I need to, uh, but um, uh, some of the tools that we'll run through and some of the strategies we'll run through are all about helping to uh, leverage us in uh, business. So just to kick off uh, for the evening, um, if I can ask you to pull out your phones and... Um, Check into Facebook. So if you um, open up your phone and on the right hand side, there's a little check in there. You should find business owners uh, smashing it online uh, there. So just check in, let people know you're here. And also remember that uh, when you're checking in, 
Uh, one, it lets other people know that they missed a uh, fantastic event here uh, again tonight. But more importantly, uh, it builds your digital profile on, um, uh, on, uh, on Facebook to uh, let, um, so when people are stalking you or looking at you or wanting to find out more about you, you're building up a, a business profile uh, of uh, you know, the events that you've attended, the things that you're doing, your professional development. It's not just all about uh, all the cafes and casinos that uh, you've visited. So, um, so Facebook is a social platform, but it's also a professional platform, and it's a good place to build your professional <laughs> profile as well. So, um, so go and check in, find business owners smashing it online, and, uh, and then we'll kick off. Okay. So, and if you are on um, unmuted, just mute yourself, just so we don't get the uh, background noise uh, coming through. All right. Okay, so the agenda for the evening, as uh, always, is uh, uh, first part of the evening are some cool online tools which uh, I'll pre present and talk about. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll have the uh, presentation uh, with Chantal, who will be joining us, and that's all on, uh, as I said, uh, free tools. Oh, sorry, how to get customers for free on uh, Facebook. Uh, then we'll have some time for, for question and answer. We do have a prize draw tonight, so. Um, so the prize draw is uh, pretty good. Chantal's sort of throwing up some stuff, which is good. And, um, uh, and I've got an announcement as well. Uh, we do have people watching on Facebook Live as well. So if you are on Facebook Live, jump onto the link below, come and join us on uh, the Zoom and you'll get the uh, full experience. All right, and then we'll talk about the next event. And uh, yeah, if we've got time and we're not too tired, then uh, we'll stick around for a wee while for a bit of a chat and uh, mingle afterwards. Sound okay? Yep. Perfect. All right. All right. Well, let's get going with our, um, our cool online tools. So first one uh, is another statistic. So there's a great site out there called statista.com. And uh, if you love statistics and you want statistics, that's a great place to go, particularly if you're doing presentations uh, and uh, you need to find some statistics. They've got all sorts of things there. As you can imagine at the moment, it's all... Uh, uh, all about COVID and uh, you know whatever's happening in the world, uh, but just sift and sort and go past all that sort of stuff, and, and you'll find some stuff. So this one here jumped out at uh, me today, and this is the platform called Etsy, which is a uh, online uh, selling platform for people making um, handmade goods. So um, and so uh, what's happened is that uh, since uh, April, Etsy shares have just uh, skyrocketed. So at the beginning of the uh, announcement of uh, COVID, sort of in in that sort of uh, March period, you'll notice that the um, that the uh, uh, the um, stocks have actually gone down, uh, and uh, and they hit hit a hit sort of um, a bottom there, and then they come all the way up. Now the reason for that is that um, there was a uh, this is over in the US. The government uh, encouraged people to uh, wear cloth masks. So, um, and, and I think that was probably because of the shortage of, um, uh, you know, sort of medical masks and ones you could buy. So all of these uh, uh, people that were on Etsy, well not all of them, but some of them on Etsy that were selling product started making handmade uh, face masks. So, um, and there was something over a million face masks that have been um, sold on Etsy that are handmade. So, um, so these people here that are uh, sort of craftspeople, they've jumped on the bandwagon and uh, they've been selling uh, face masks uh, like crazy. Uh, and, um, and you can imagine there's a whole lot of different uh, patterns. There's, there's knitted ones, there's cloth ones, there's ones with patterns on, there's ones with pictures on. So uh, some of them having a, a whole lot of fun with, um, uh, you know, with this uh, platform. So there you go. So sort of, uh, some, some businesses are doing well. So e-commerce is obviously starting to uh, have an upward rise. So if you think about uh, your business as well, uh, you know, if you've taken a dip or whether you're going up, what can you do to think about uh, some, some different uh, products that you can uh, uh, offer to people or different ways of presenting your products uh, that will help you uh, with a, um, a, an uptick there. So, um, so that there's Etsy, but it's also got a good lesson for us in business, so just thinking a, a wee bit differently. All right, well, the next uh, app is one that's called uh, Gravatar. Who's, who's heard of this one before? Okay, so those that are in the WordPress world uh, may have heard of it. Gravatar is owned by Automatic, uh, which is the company that, uh, 
uh, is responsible for developing the WordPress software. But what Gravatar is, is it's a central platform for you to add a photo and a brief bio of yourself. Uh, so, and, uh, and it's associated with your email address so that when you comment on other people's websites, so those that have got commenting turned on, uh, as long as you use your, your email address that you've set up uh, Gravatar with, then automatically that will pull your picture and your profile uh, from Gravatar onto that website. So when people hover over the picture and a comment that you've made, so if you think about the uh, Facebook experience, when people are uh, going through the Facebook feeds, and I know I do, I do this, is that when someone's made a comment that you're interested in or is controversial or is a wee bit different, you hover over the icon just to see who this person is. And then you get, so Facebook puts a little so bio and you know who the person is and, and so you can link through to their page. Well, Gravatar is a bit like that, uh, but that's for the uh, internet, so on other people's uh, blogs. So, um, so it's a great way of, uh, of uh, getting your profile out there without having to fill in a profile every single time you want to comment um, on a website. So, and it means that you get a consistent photo uh, out there uh, online. So um, I'll just take you through to the platform, I think, if this is going to work. Let's see if uh, technology will do its thing. It's probably not going to play nice for me today. Okay. It's not going to play nice at the moment. So all I was going to do is, uh, is show you, but just go to gravatar.com, sign up for an account. It's free. Uh, then you can upload an image uh, and so complete a bio there, and then it's available so sort of whenever you're commenting uh, anywhere else. So, um, so, 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 and if you think about that uh, profile of yours, then uh, that can also bring people back to your uh, website. So Nick, does that work on um, Facebook? Did you say? Oh, no, it, it just works on um, on the web, on blog posts. On blog posts, so yeah. on my website or, or on web blogs, okay. That's so right. not so Instagram yeah, not or any of those. Yeah. Yep. yep. All right. I am gonna try and get back to where we were, okay. All right, next one is, uh, this is this is all about e-commerce. So, um, so, so, a number of people are just asking about uh, SKU codes. So, um, so an SKU code, essentially it's a barcode, but it's a standard uh, identifying uh, number for uh, a product. So, uh, and, and if you've got a product that's got, um, uh, let's say you sell, uh, oh, we've got someone that sells cycling jerseys on here, so Martin. So let's say you've got cycling jerseys and you've got them in red, green, blue and black. Each one of those would have a, a, a separate SKU uh, code. Now one of the hardest things for people is to, is to come up with a, um, uh, you know, a readable and uh, a, a legible SKU code. So um, tradegecko.com has uh, come up with one. Uh, let me just try and get back here. I was just going to try and show you the site. But no, we've got some uh, technical hitches tonight. Let me just let me just stop sharing here and see if we can get back to it. Okay. No, that's all right. It's not playing ball tonight. But it, if you go to Trade Gecko, I've just spelt that wrong on the slide. It should be Trade Gecko G E K O dot com forward slash free hyphen tools forward slash SKU hyphen generator. And I've spelt that one wrong as well too. So uh, I was obviously on a, uh, on a roll today. But if you go to, uh, to that website, um, that there you can put in, uh, you can upload a CSV of all your products and all the combinations, uh, and it will generate a, um, a, a SKU code for all of your products, uh, all in one go, which you can then go and use to um, upload to your uh, website. So if you've got a uh, WooCommerce website or a um, Shopify website, um, then um, well certainly with uh, WooCommerce, you can download all your products, add your SKU codes, and then upload the whole lot uh, back up to um, uh, WordPress again, and, um, and then your SKUs will be available there. Now, if you're using something like uh, Square, or, um, or Square in particular, they need uh, SKU codes uh, in order to uh, help with uh, inventory management. 
So, um, so some people don't use and don't have it, but uh, you know, if, if you really want to, uh, if you're selling across a number of platforms and you're using a, a payment gateway like Square, then it's a helpful uh, a tool to have to have those individual SKU codes, um, and and you can, they can't be the same one, so they've all got to be unique, uh, so that you can run sort of uh, your uh, inventory management. Uh, it's on your website, and it works with uh, importing it into Zero uh, or whatever um, accounting system that you use as well too. All right, next one here is um, oh, these, these, this is just analysing traffic uh, and, and a whole lot of uh, SEO tools. So you can use, um, say, Google, uh, uh, Google Search Console or Google Analytics to see what's happening on your site. Uh, Google sort of stripped away uh, a lot of information now, and, and some of that's only available for uh, Google Ads. Uh, used to be able to see all the keywords that people were searching on to uh, get to your site, uh, but uh, they've removed a lot of that now. Um, and um, so, um, so tools like uh, this one here help to get around some of that. It's, it, it'll hook up to your Google Analytics and, and Google and, and Search Console, uh, and it'll give you a more sort of uh, accurate indicator of some of those keywords that um, that you may be missing out on. So, um, so this one is, uh, if you go to app.neilpatel.com, Neil Patel, if you um, haven't heard of him before, he would be uh, one of the leading uh, search engine optimization uh, gurus in the world. Uh, his blog is a good blog to follow. Uh, if you're wanting to do uh, something about optimizing your uh, search traffic on your site and your presence uh, online, uh, then uh, Neil Patel is a uh, good uh, person to follow, very authoritative, very knowledgeable, and uh, he, would, he would be one of my uh, go-to people uh, to, um, you know, if I'm wanting to find out more about uh, SEO. So he's got some tools on there, including this one here, which is called Uber Suggest, uh, which will help you sort of, um, uh, you know, do some analysis on, uh, on you know, the tools that are available. I'm going to try this again and see if we're going to, uh, see if we can um, see my other screen. Okay. Let's uh, hop over here. Okay. All right, you should be able to see the uh, Uber Suggest tool now. It's, it's an orange screen. Just give us a thumbs up if you can see it. Sweet. All right, we've got it working again. Okay, so, um, and you'll see there's a number of uh, tabs down here. So all you do is uh, you simply put in a, um, a domain. So um, let's put one in. So, pithurogear.com, I understand that one there sells um, cycling gear, and uh, you can run analysis. I should have actually set this to Australia to see what's in Australia, but this one's a global site, so that's okay. So you can see that uh, from uh, June through to March, so um, uh, the, uh, the traffic there, so that's, that's the, um, the amount of traffic uh, over a period of time. There are 173 keywords that uh, the site is uh, ranking for, and um, what it will do is it will give you the uh, top keywords by um, um, uh, by country. So there's uh, he's got uh, three in the U.S. Uh, and this one's a relatively new site, so it's probably not a fair one to pick on. But it's a relatively new site. So, uh, but being new, it'll give you some opportunities to um, uh, to think about what you can um, uh, rank for. So down here, the SEO keywords. These these are ones that uh, you would consider. Uh, looking to see whether you would uh, do something on your website to uh, either rank for or write articles for or play around with the, um, the descriptions of the products to try and uh, increase the ranking. So, um, so here's one that's on um, page one. Uh, so it's position number eight, performance cycling gear. So seeing that one there, I'd spend quite a bit of time on that one, trying to optimise uh, that one there. It's, it's, it's got a, a low volume of search, you know, sort of 20. But look, um, uh, it's it's probably um, uh, with 20 people. It's going to they're going to be higher quality search if they're looking for performance cycling gear, uh, as opposed to just cycling gear. Um, that qualifier says that they're probably more highly qualified and um, more likely to be a subscriber or a buyer. Um, rain map. I'm not 100% sure what that means, but maybe a cyclist does. Um, now here's one here. Uh, bolt on e bike so that's probably a brand. Um, uh, women's, uh, oh, here it is women's cycling gear, men's cycling gear. Look at this one here men's cycling gear uh, has got a volume of 590. 
um, and that's at position 82. So um, that one may be a bit more competitive, uh, but but that there will give you some ideas, so at least some ideas about what you can be thinking about in terms of uh, optimizing. So they've got other tools here that you've got your site site audit here, which will just go through your whole site and uh, give you suggestions on uh, what you can optimize and uh, you know some opportunities for you. Uh, you've got this other one, which is keyword ideas, which will give you some other ideas uh, for keywords. You can put in someone else's domain, a competitor's domain, see what they're using, and then look at uh, some low-hanging fruit that you could use uh, as well too. So go and visit uh, Neil Patel. He um, he has got a lot of information um, and uh, well worth uh, you know if you're in the SEO game wanting to do more with your uh, search engine optimization, that's a great place to get some uh, information. All right, well let's uh, let's head back to the slides again, and we'll go on to our next uh, tool. Okay. All right, so next one that we have. All right, can you see the presentation again? Have I got the right screen? Yes. All right. Oh, next one, Air Story. Air Story, okay, I've got to demo this one because this, um, this is pretty good. Um, so if, if you're short of ideas for, um, uh, for content, uh, Air Story is a great place to, um, to get some ideas. Uh, okay. Okay, let's go. So, air story. Here we are. Okay. So, um, and so, what air story is? Um, it's it's essentially an app. So, um, and, and it's a Chrome extension. So, if you go to airstory.co or just search for air story Chrome extension. Uh, you'll, you'll get an extension which will allow you to grab snippets of text uh, to put together an article. So if you're doing some research, uh, for instance, you could open a, uh, a number of uh, tabs, a number of websites, uh, and uh, you could read through them. And as you're reading through, there's a little uh, icon uh, which you've got uh, when you've installed uh, AirStory. Uh, and there's a link up the top that says Start Highlighting. Okay. And then when you do that, um, I'll first always select a project, so let's uh, select Nick's project. Uh, you can add a tag to it, so let's say um, uh, we're going to add a tag blog post. And you'd be a bit more descriptive than that. Uh, click save. Okay, and then we're going to start. Okay start highlighting so if we go and highlight this text here okay so we've got that text there and then let's say we want to highlight this text as well and then when we click done that text that you've highlighted is now put into a clipboard and then uh, you can uh, copy and paste that out into a document and start writing. So, so you can do things like uh, just grab headlines. If you want to go through the news and just grab some headlines, go through websites and just grab snippets of uh, information on related websites to give you a starter to start writing. So good if you're writing review sites. So, so some, uh, so some websites are, you know have have what do they call it listicles, which uh, you might might write a review of the. Um, uh, you know, of the top 10, 10 web, uh, e-commerce websites, for instance. So, um, so, so you can list that. So you can grab a snippet, uh, a heading, a snippet, and an image of each of the websites by using uh, AirStory. Copy it all in there, and um, and then when you're ready, and you can just save it. So, like, if you save it uh, here, then uh, that's saved for you to come back to uh, AirStory at some later time, and uh, then you can just log in grab your ideas and then start uh, writing uh, a blog post or content or could be ads, could be social media, could be whatever you're doing. So can you see a use for that? Mm. All right. Okay. So that's Air Story. The next one that we'll run through is... Okay. make sure we're back on the right screen okay 
Okay, the next one is... Have I missed one? Oh, it's actually, oh, it's actually a book. Yes, this is a book uh, called The Automatic Customer. I, um, I read this uh, uh, about a year ago, um, and it's uh, by uh, John uh, Warillo, and uh, he is, uh, some of you might know him from a book that he wrote, which is called uh, Built to Sell. So, um, but he's writing about the subscription business and the subscription economy. So, so who he has noticed that uh, pretty much these days, uh, every, or a lot of things that you buy from toilet paper to uh, watching movies, listening to music, buying books, um, uh, uh, all on subscription. You know, so you've got Netflix, you've got Spotify, uh, you've got Amazon. Now, Amazon's interesting. Uh, because um, you can buy a subscription with a Amazon to join Amazon Prime, which is about 50 bucks a year, I think it is. Uh, and um, so you're not buying anything, you're just buying a subscription to their site to become a member to get special deals and special offers. So they'll, they'll give you things like free movies, uh, you get access to special deals and that sort of thing. Kindle also has something similar, which is owned by uh, Amazon as well. So you can get a Kindle subscription, which will allow you to uh, read a whole range of books, hundreds and, or thousands of books without having to buy them. So before I was buying some books on Kindle this way, just pay the subscription and uh, you can read them at your, at your leisure. Now I borrow books from the library on, a, on an app on the library. The problem with that one is, is you give them two weeks uh, to read it. Uh, I'm a bit of a slow reader sometimes, so I need uh, a bit more time. Uh, so uh, with Kindle, uh, you, you can take as long as you like and it stays in, in your library, it doesn't uh, disappear. So um, uh, eBay is also playing around with subscriptions. So you may have seen that eBay has launched its subscription product in, um, uh, which is very similar to uh, something like uh, um, uh, Amazon's, uh, Amazon Prime. Um, so, uh, and, um, and you'll see a lot of, a lot of, uh, Things like plugins, if, you, if you've got uh, so websites, plugins are on subscription. So there's a heap of stuff that's on subscription. So, think, so just think about your business. Um, and before you say, no, that wouldn't work with my business, just think about how could you turn your business from selling, uh, say, upfront uh, to a subscription, or how could you add a subscription to your business? So, um, so for instance, um, uh, let's say uh, lawn care, that's an easy one. Subscription for lawn care is, uh, you know, pay a monthly subscription, we'll come and mow your lawn when it gets long and make sure it's always kept uh, nice and tidy. So there are businesses doing that. Um, I've heard of another service selling light bulbs. Um, so pay a subscription and uh, this, this has been a commercial uh, premises. They'll come around, come around, check all the light bulbs every month and replace them as they, as they need to be replaced. Um, office plants, when we did have an office, um, so uh, you, you can get office plants on subscription. So they deliver plants, they water them, they look after them. You don't have to do anything with them. If, if they die, they take them away, they replace them. So just think about uh, what it is that you can offer on subscription uh, that, um, uh, that will add to your revenue. Now, some real advantages uh, to having a subscription business. One is, is that you increase the business value. Now, um, there's, I know there's an accountant on the call, on the call so I'll uh, probably be called out for this one here, but I was told that uh, the traditional way to value a business is uh, you know, one to two, possibly three times your, um, your net profit. So, um, but uh, with us, uh, and so what they're looking at is, is, uh, is basically your, your, um, uh, you know, what you've got, got left over after your sales and after your expenses. Um, and that's a traditional business where uh, business have to go out and keep on hunting for new business. With a subscription-based business is that um, the, the revenue just keeps on coming in so that uh, there, there's predictable revenue that comes in every year. So at the end of the year, you know that on the 1st of January, you will have revenue coming in whether you're working or not. So, um, and they call that ARR, which is Annual Recurring Revenue. So a business that's got annual recurring revenue can sell anywhere between two to eight times uh, the, um, the revenue. Not just the profit, but the revenue. So, um, so automatic customer goes through the, uh, the form. It's a bit techy in there, uh, that part of it, but it really sort of makes a lot of sense. Next, next thing is, is that you increase the uh, customer lifetime value. So people that are on uh, subscription 
typically will stay with you longer as long as you're adding value and they're getting benefit on it, uh, on their subscription, uh, month after month after month, you, um, you will turn something that say, let's say a $4,000 sale up front, if you're selling $4,000 product or service, that they're up front versus uh, taking a, um, uh, let's say a $200, uh, $200 a month uh, subscription. So if that customer's with you for um, you know, two, three, four years, then, um, then you well exceed the uh, original sale. And chances are uh, that those customers, once they're on subscription, will come and buy off you uh, again and more often. Third thing it does is it smooths out demand. So what that means is uh, that often businesses uh, have this uh, cycle where um, they're, they're marketing and, and, and selling. So they're put, putting out their marketing. They, they get a whole lot of work that comes in. So at the top of the cycle, they've got a heap of work. Now they've got to go and deliver it. They stop marketing, stop their sales process and um, uh, while they uh, deliver on the, um, on the work. And then the other side of it is they finish. Then all of a sudden, they've got no new leads coming in. So, uh, so the income starts to, uh, or the revenue starts to dry up. So now they've got to pump out the, uh, the marketing, try and get uh, some sales coming through for the uh, uptick uh, again. So it's, it's quite a, um, a, a roller coaster ride for a lot of small business. So what uh, subscription income does, uh, business does, is it smooths out, uh, smooths out that. So you've got predictable revenue coming through every month. Now I spoke about this um, with a uh, dog groomer uh, last week on our uh, office hours um, uh, webinar on Wednesday. And, um, and so she was saying that uh, sometimes uh, she gets dogs that come in, owners have sort of left it, uh, you know, eight weeks to get, to get the dog uh, groomed, the dog's got knots all through it, and uh, it, uh, instead of the job taking uh, you know, an hour, the job now takes three hours. And she said, I can't charge any more for that um, because uh, you know, they won't pay. Well, they, they probably would pay because they've, they've either got to get the dog sort of, uh, uh, sort of done or they've got to do it themselves. So, um, so we spoke about, well, so instead of that, if you want them to come in more often, Rather than um, you know just charging them the $180 it is to groom a dog when they come along, why not put them onto something like a weekly or a monthly subscription, and they just uh, uh, have their dog booked in every month. So that way, it increases her income in two ways. One, she doesn't get dogs that come in that um, that are matted, that uh, need sort of three times the uh, time to get them sorted out. So she'll get dogs coming in at you know, every month instead of uh, you know sometimes every two or three months. And so, um, so for her, she's able to smooth out the time she's spending with the dogs. That means she can get more dogs in, so uh, she makes more, um, more revenue. The other thing too is that instead of these customers uh, leaving their dog for, for eight weeks, um, they'll bring that dog in uh, every month because they've paid for it in, in advance already. So uh, that way there she's uh, increasing the um, uh, number, of, uh, number of transactions. And so when, when the, um, uh, the dog lover, the dog mother, father comes in, uh, you've always got the opportunity while they're in there with, uh, with you to sell them something else as well. So whether it be a dog colour, walking lead, food, um, toy, whatever it is. So, uh, you know, while the customers are in front of you, then it's another opportunity to, to uh, upsell as well. So that one's just smoothing out demand. Next one is it's free market research. So um, if you've got people on subscription and uh, you're introducing new products into that subscription, uh, then um, you'll soon get to uh, see whether they're popular or not so popular, which ones people like and which ones people don't. So it, it gives you some uh, valuable information. And that's, and that's uh, one of the reasons why Amazon's doing so well, is they uh, see what people's uh, trends are and what they're doing just by what they're um, uh, acquiring through the, uh, their, their subscription, so what they're, they're picking up for free. Uh, obviously, you get paid automatically. You don't have to send out invoices. It's just on a uh, automatic s subscription with say something like PayPal, Stripe, uh, Square, or whatever you're using. So it takes out a lot of the admin. Makes customers sticky. So if they pay a subscription and they're thinking about where to go to buy the next product, because they're already with you, uh, they're more likely to stay with you. Again, Amazon. What they found is that, but when when they charge a subscription of fifty dollars a year, it's not very much money. Uh, if someone's thinking about buying something, uh, they could go to Kogan, eBay, Amazon, whatever. Their first point of call is that they, they're going to go to Amazon because they've already paid for it, so they want to get their money's worth. So um, it's only 50 bucks, but that's people's psychology, so it makes them sticky. 
and, uh, and also subscribers. Uh, uh, people who are subscribers will also buy more. You get the opportunity to uh, see them more often, develop a close relationship with them, find out what they, what they want. Um, and, you know, as in that dog example, instead of the dog coming in sort of six weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks, you know, they come in uh, you know, every four weeks. So, that, so they are generally probably going to buy more. So those are, those are some uh, advantages. You can get this book on Amazon. If you're a real aficionado, check out that third one along. You can buy it for $925,000 uh, sorry, $925 for that book. So uh, that's the hardback version, and there's obviously something special about that one. Otherwise, pick it up for $15 on Kindle or get a Kindle subscription and uh, get it for free in Kindle. Mm. All right. Any um. Any questions on that? Anything there that you found uh, helpful, useful, or uh, or not? Just uh, just unmute yourself and uh, and feel free to share. Yeah, I like the book. Thanks, Nick. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, it's a really good book, actually. Any other comments? Oh, uh, Nick, just just Martin here again. Um, I, I just think that. I like the idea of a subscription thing, but I, I generally just want to sell clothes, right? That's what I want to sell. Um, so you, you want to what, sorry? Sell clothes. That's what I want to sell. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, but, you know, if I was to do something like that, it, it, it becomes more of a lay-by. Is, is that what it, what it is? Because uh, I, I can't be charging $200 a month. No one's ever going to be paying it. So it's going to be like 10 or $20 a month. So... It comes look, like a pay-by service. Is that is that what it is? Or not quite. No. Look, you, uh, like if if you're equating it, you've got an e-commerce store. If you're equating it to an e-commerce store, they might become a member of the Perfuro Club, mm. and um, the Perfuro Club might uh, give them benefits like free shipping for anything that they've bought. Uh, they might get uh, advance notice of um, you know cycling events that are happening in uh, in their area. Um, uh, there might be special in-store promotions with uh, partners that you've got. Um, yeah, so, well, that, yeah. Happens, that happens now anyway, like without subscription, basically. Yep. Um, so they get so, a, it's like a discount, a permanent lifetime sort of discount, $10 per item, which can go towards shipping or, or whatever, right? So if they yep. buy a, a jersey and a pair of shorts, that's 20 bucks. Yeah. Right? Usually just about, you know, it definitely covers shipping within Australia, but... Um, just about yep. shipping overseas, but um, so how um, maybe we should have another conversation about this separately. That, that'd be good to workshop through because there's definitely some opportunities in uh, in an e-commerce. So one of the challenges with e-commerce is that, and when you're solely e-commerce, is that um, you've got to get people to your store, you've got to motivate them to buy, and you've got to keep them coming back to your store. Um, now, I suspect that. Um, I'm not going to put her on the spot, but Chantelle might sort of talk a bit about how to get those customers there and some, some strategies behind that on, on Facebook. But that's always the, the challenge is getting people there. And look, it's no different to um, having a, um, a shop in, say, a Westfields. Um, you've still got to get people there, but the, but the benefit that you've got with a Westfield is it's already a destination. So the shopping centre already does the work to get the customers there. Once they're in the store, you've, you've got to get them into your little part of that store there. So it's still the yeah. same equation. Um, so, but, but having a subscription is another way of trying to get them in. Um, and, but more than that, you, you, you want, having a subscription is almost like being the member of a club. And so, well, let's say a member of a church. You know, if you're a member of a church, you're going to go along to the church and you feel like you belong and, and you're part of it. So you need to be able to create your, your subscription so it feels like they belong to something. They're not just paying a monthly fee. That yeah, well, that's, that, that's, that's right. Um, yeah. Well, they have to get something in return as well, right? They, Absolutely. People aren't Absolutely. just going to just pay money just to be part of that club to get a discount. They've got to feel like they're getting more value out of it than they're paying. So that, that's yeah, really you, Nick, is, I, I think you also like mine I'm, I'm still you know reasonably early days and, and um i i think you need a, a good product range as well yep, yep. To be able to rotate now I, i've certainly i've got two series that are open and one's one sort of available so that's that's probably something that you'd have to think about also when you when you're going into that because if you get into that subscription sort of circle you need to be producing or um widening your range as you go as well yeah. Would that be something true to say, just as a comment? 
it's, it's probably one thing to, to, to consider in that, that whole mix as well too. But probably worth having, um, sort of talking about that further and so sort of workshopping outside of this. I'm just yes, aware yeah. that we've got to move on because uh, we've got Chantel waiting in the wings here for us. Thanks for the comment. All right. Excellent. Uh, oh, and if you do have any other comments, feel free to, co to put it in chat. Uh, you know, if we can come back to it later, we will. Uh, and it might also provide some good um, opportunity to chat on uh, Facebook or uh, in person. And uh, or if uh, anyone wants to wants to come along to the office hours tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning, that's just a free open uh, session to uh, talk about anything to have these sort of discussions as well. too. All right. Well, uh, at this point, I would like to uh, welcome uh, Chantal Girardi. Some of you may uh, know Chantal. She uh, is synonymous with uh, Blue. Um, she's the uh, Facebook uh, expert. She's helped a, a lot of businesses, uh, not just in the Gold Coast and Brisbane, uh, but throughout Australia. She even went to Tasmania to um, help people um, in their uh, businesses down there. So, um, so she's a uh, Facebook expert. I've been trying to get her here for a long time and uh, tonight we have the uh, privilege of having her. So for all of those that uh, did show up tonight, you're in for a treat. So welcome Chantal and it's over to you. Hello and thank you for letting me have a word in Edgeways, Nick. <laughs> I've been self-combusting here behind the scenes. I uh, can see you. <laughs> for those who do know me, I, I love talking. And when I called Nick before this presentation, I said, we're going to seriously struggle trying to give each other turn, turn to talk. <laughs> um, but oh, I love Nick and I love everything that he has to say. And he's adding so much value to everyone. And no matter how often you listen to him, there's always something valuable that comes out of his mouth. There's always something worth taking on board and applying towards your business, which is really, really super cool. So thank you to everybody for coming tonight. I struggle in the evenings um, and I'll probably struggle to get to sleep after this because I get excited. <laughs> but i um, really, really excited to be here today to help uh, everybody learn how you can get fast and free results on Facebook. Fast and free. Who would like fast and free? Raise your hand. Um, because it is possible. Here's the thing, okay? Everyone, and I mean, I heard this twice today, twice in, in sales calls from potential clients. They said, oh, you're the first person who said to me that I don't need to have to pay for ads. And I'm like, you don't. And in fact, if you do not have your organic strategy down packed, meaning if you're not already generating clients for free on Facebook, it doesn't matter whether or not you throw a million dollars at it or whether or not you lift your skirt up. It's not going to change anything, okay? Um, so as I talk, as I just talk and I'm just crazy, please, any questions in the chat box, uh, please feel free to write questions in the chat box. What I will do, if it will let me, is I will move across to my PowerPoint presentation. It's really cool to see so many amazing people on here, and I cannot wait to actually see everyone in person again. All right, so share screen. There we go. Cool bananas. Boston free. Yeah, baby. Boston the Furious. Okay. All right. So let's start with some did you know? Because everybody loves statistics. All right. And everyone always says to me, why Facebook? So here we go. 93% of small businesses prefer Facebook because it's fun, engaging, and entertaining. All right. So I thought, okay, well, maybe you're not going to believe that. But 67% of marketers find Facebook to be their most important social media channel. 67% of marketers. Now, then I handle the B2B because all the B2B people go, no, 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 we don't use Facebook. Well, 43% of B2B marketers also named Facebook as their most important advertising channel passing LinkedIn. There are 2.8 billion monthly active users on Facebook. So I'm almost certain your client is going to be on there. There are over 60 million active business pages, but only 6 million do paid advertising. Now, this is really interesting. The average advert click-through rate is only 0.9%. I'm going to let you sleep on that one today, 0.9%. People access Facebook about eight times each day. So uh, if you're brave enough, in the comment box, in the chat box, just write uh, whether or not you think that um, you use Facebook, you check into Facebook eight times a day, more or less. Come on, be brave, put it in the comments box, let us know. 
Uh, 51% of millennials can't go five hours without checking Facebook. Uh, Facebook users make 2 billion searches every month. So people are on there searching for you. Um, 500 million Facebook users are using the platform to watch videos every day. 500 million per day. Wow, on video. Um, and at the moment, Facebook use is up by 70%. Why? Because they're all at home and they're all unemployed. Um, but they're all at home. And the thing is, so they're all on Facebook. So the good news is, is that there's more people on Facebook, so you can be in front of more people. The bad news is, is that there are more people on Facebook, which means you're competing against more people, which means you really do have to have an outstanding online presence if you want to stand out. I did sneak this little one in over here only because I love the statistic about how Facebook is so far up on it, although it is a US uh, a survey. But you can see there that people are searching on YouTube 73%, Facebook's at 69, good old 69, uh, and Instagram down at 37, and your other platforms down below. So just in case you didn't believe that Facebook is the, is the preferred choice. But what I want to first help you with is understanding the full capabilities of the platform. So everyone thinks they know how to use Facebook. And this to me is the best sort of way to explain it. When you start a Facebook profile, you can have one personal profile, which is yours, and it is attached to one email. Now, how people end up with multiple platforms is usually not because they've been hacked, but because they've made a mistake, and instead of logging in, they have actually uh, created a whole, new, uh, a whole new profile, which is a true story. And then they phone me and they tell me they've been hacked, but they actually haven't been hacked. They've just created accidentally a whole new, uh, a whole new profile because it's one email per one profile, okay? Your personal profile is private unless you make it public, okay? So you can decide on this, which is really cool. Now on your personal profile, we call it friends and you're limited to 5,000 friends. And this is one of the reasons why we really shouldn't uh, be creating a, personal, a business page as a personal profile. So I'm gonna use the right language. So I hope that you can understand as I go along. Uh, there is a section there for your bio. So I want you to just think for a minute if you know if you filled out all these things on your personal profile. But there's a section there for your bio. You can fill in your contact details. However, please don't put your address as public, your home address. Please do not. Your business details are there as well. Uh, your digital links. And again, you can decide what is private or what is public. You have featured photos which come up first when you are using it on your mobile phone. Your relationship status is there and that can be private or public and you can either attach or, or not attach yourself to your partner in your relationship status. Uh, your location is there and as I said, do not put in your home address, but maybe that's the South African in me. Uh, and family members. Facebook created the family members feature, which I'm against, because if you, uh, if you came across somebody crazy on Facebook, because there's all the haters on there, and they were trying to get at you, they could then access your family members in your personal profile. So I encourage you to go in and actually remove your family members, because guess what? You know who they are. Uh, there's no need to show Facebook people who your family members are. Uh, you don't want somebody attacking your 93-year-old grandmother on social media or hitting on her. Um, there is life events as well. There's a feature called life events, which is really cool. It ends up being a real collection of all your certifications. And when you were in the newspaper and uh, any awards that you've won, you can actually collect all of those in your life events in your personal profile. You can check in. Don't check in at home, please. Uh, there's an events feature, which is private. You have your privacy settings. So everybody seems to think that everything's public on your personal profile, but it's not. You can determine every single aspect of it, what is going to be private or, pu or public. You can tag people, uh, you can message people. There's Facebook story, which is their equivalent of Snapchat, which I'll explain a little bit later. Uh, you have profile preferences. You can put in a favorite quote, which some of you may not know about. Uh, details about you, which I encourage you to put in there because if someone is stalking you, you want to make sure that your little bio and your little details about you and all your links are in there and they have access to it, especially if you're working on growing your personal branding. 
your birthday's in there, uh, which sends the algorithm going crazy on your birthday when everyone wishes you. So that is the time for you to actually make uh, your, um, that is the time for you to turn on the feature for people to post on your profile. All right, so let's talk now about your business page. Now you can have unlimited business pages and they are public. Now, the more business pages you have, the less time you'll have because they're all going to, <laughs> they're all going to need looking after and they're all going to require strategies. So I encourage you to have as few business pages as possible because they are going to require work. Now, these are called fans and they are unlimited. You can have as many fans as you like on your business page. There's also a review section, which you now can turn off. So in the olden days, which was about six months ago, uh, you couldn't do that, but now you can actually turn off the review tab. However, many people buy from looking at the reviews, at your reviews. There's a click to contact button, which is super important because it makes it people it easily accept, easy, they can easily accessible. You see, this is why I'm bad at night. Nick, I've finished talking, I've lost all my words. It can make it easily accessible for people to contact you. Physical address. And again, please do not put in your home address. For example, gyms. If you have a gym from home, do not put in your physical address. Rather, if someone's using your services, send it to them privately, but you do not want it public. Page story, which is the same as um, your story is just the same equivalent as uh, Snapchat, which I will talk about later. And it is governed by a response rate, meaning that the quicker you are to respond to messages, the higher up on the list Facebook will rank you when people want to contact you. There are three search categories which are shitty. Um, they're not great. The first one you put in is the most important because uh, you have to use the suggestions that Facebook gives you. So you can't come up with nice ones that you want to use. The first one is the most important because that's the one that you can see. There is a second one and I've been noticing the third one has been sort of disappearing. There is a section for you to write your about story, and this is probably one of the most important things that you wanna make sure that you've done on your Facebook page. If you wanna find that, it's in your about section. You can run events. Uh, you can set up your services, your shop, or both. Uh, in the olden days, which was quite recently, you couldn't do both, but you can actually set them up. All you need to do is go into your settings, uh, go to templates and tabs, and you can actually add those features in there. I do encourage you to turn off the tabs that you're not using on your Facebook page because it doesn't look nice if you're sending people to something that's not there. You can also have offers, like run offers from there as well. Remembering that Facebook is uh, makes their money from paid advertising. So yes, they are going to continually be asking you to boost uh, your offers and asking you to do paid promotions. There is a community tab, which is really cool. So if people are tagging you in things, it'll collect all those photos of people that are mentioning or tagging you. So it's a great way for social proof. You can link to your groups, making it easy for people to find what groups you're in. Uh, your inbox is there. So a lot of people don't know, but people message you on your personal profile and your inbox is separate and it's on your business page, uh, unless you download the app. There is a messaging response area or an auto response section where you don't actually have to have a messenger bot. You can use Facebook's own inbuilt automated response. Um, and my suggestion to you there would be to consider the customer journey and how people are at every stage when they, um, when they, uh, when they send you an inquiry. There's page roles in administration, meaning that other people can have rights to your page. However, I do encourage people to have a social media responsibilities agreement in place with whoever you give access to on your page, because else people may have rights uh, and may not know how to use all those features. They think they do, but they don't. And we have had pages lose vital parts of information on their page due to people not knowing what they've done and we have not been able to recover it. You can obviously do paid ads and boosts, uh, but yeah, boosts don't work, so don't do boosts. You'll hear that often. Um, tagging, uh, you can also tag people, so you want to make sure that you're tagging and your URL set up. And there's also a jobs feature. So if you're wanting to look for more employees, like say, for example, you a cleaning company and you want to get more cleaners for your business, there is a feature there to go to the job section on Facebook uh, and put a job out there. I do, however, encourage you to be exceptionally um, explicit about what it is, specific about what it is 
that you are looking for and what the requirements are and say to them that they must email you rather than not message you back through Facebook. Because we've had situations where there's been thousands of time wasters and tie kickers uh, putting in their job applications through there. And you can schedule. So obviously Facebook loves all things Facebook and Facebook's trying to take over the world. Um, so using their own publishing, uh, publishing tool uh, and scheduling it through Facebook is obviously the favored way for you to schedule your posts. So that is called, in, it is found in publishing tools. And then of course we've got groups. So groups can be public, they can be closed, they can be secret. Now the people in these groups, we call them members. Uh, there's a description for every group, which I encourage every person to go in and read when they go into a group. And there's rules and etiquette. Uh, and they're usually they're not Facebook rules, they're usually Hitler's rules, meaning whoever the person is that created that group, uh, it's their rules. And if they can be as crazy as they want to be with them. And some of you will know exactly what I mean. Uh, there are also categories. Uh, there's also admin responsibilities, so you can give different admin duties to people. Uh, you can run events inside there as well. There are sections for you to either save your files or even run training units, which is amazing. Uh, you can schedule in there too, and you can also direct message people through there. You can tag people. In fact, I encourage people to tag people in groups because a while ago, which is now sort of like a year ago, uh, Facebook, because of the algorithm, if somebody engaged in a group, you'd get the notification. That's gone now because it's uh, because people belong to so many groups. So now, unless you're actually engaging in that group, you're not going to get that notification. So if you're trying to talk to the administrator or the owner of the group or the coach in the group, or you're trying to talk to another member in the group, I encourage everybody just to always at them because that way they're going to get the um, get the notification. But wait, there's more with Facebook trying to take over the world. Um, they've created Watch Party. So Watch Party is the ability to have a group of streaming videos for your members to comment on. Um, I personally believe that because there was a drop in Facebook Live views, Facebook created Watch Party so we could take those lives and take that video content and put it across more places uh, so that we could keep the reach up, so we could keep people using and engaging on Facebook. Uh, again, that's just my personal sort of belief with it. Uh, there's Facebook Stories, which is page stories, and then your personal stories, which is Facebook's uh, take on Snapchat. So Facebook tried to buy Snapchat twice, in fact, and Snapchat, Snapchat went, nah, uh Facebook got upset and said, no worries, we're actually just going to do it ourselves. So they created the own one. And basically what it is, is it's only viewable for 24 hours, and it's for people who would rather watch rather than scroll and read. It gets taken up into Facebook Storyland. Um, and it looks all pretty. You can put all the little gifts in, little funny things in, um, and it creates it into a rolling video, which is only viewable for 24 hours. In saying that, Facebook is at the moment seeing whether or not they're actually going to keep it up there for three, de uh, three days as opposed to 24 hours. So they are sampling that at the moment. Um, and the other thing is the reason they wanted that was to try and get a younger audience on Facebook, and they have succeeded. Now there's Workplace. So Workplace is Facebook's sort of take on LinkedIn, where it's a communication tool that connects everyone uh, in the workplace. So they can basically connect remotely. If they've got groups, chats, video calls, live video broadcasting, all working together in Workplace. And some of you may or may not know about that one. Um, there's Marketplace, which is their take on Gumtree and on eBay, where um, you know location-based, you can buy, sell, and trade items. Uh, in your local in your local region as well, and just launched yesterday on trial is Messenger Rooms because when everybody jumped onto Zoom and Zoom started crashing, Facebook went, "Oh, we can create our own Zoom. We already do Messenger and we already do Messenger Groups. So what we'll do is we'll have a Messenger Room and you can get all roomy with your groups uh, and have up to fifty members in there. And on top of that, you can you'll be able to screen share." screen share which is really really cool and it's going to be free uh, so they are trialing it at the moment <laughs> cool next message in there on my watch all right cool let's have a look here so before we do anything else let me just check over here at the chats how's we how are we going with the chats any questions in there let's have a look sorry because i've got this on okay more than eight times definitely more yeah people are wasting so much time on there more than eight I saw messenger rooms today. Yeah, cool. Excellent. All right, cool. 
term at all. All right, so some of you may have heard this before, but we talk about the fundamentals of Facebook. And seriously, if you do not do these, you will fail end of story. Um, and the funny thing is most of it has nothing to do with Facebook, but it has everything to do with getting results on Facebook. So I hope that that makes sense. And I hope that if you do not do anything down today, anything more today, it's these, um, these fundamentals. All right, cool. Good look. Okay, so first you've got to know who you are. And you're going, oh, what a load of rubbish. This is probably the hardest one. And everyone goes, I get stuck in question one. Um, and business coaches do this. You know, like, who are you? How do you want to be seen on lead, uh, online? How do you want to have a public profile, a personal profile? Like, um, you know, like you have to decide that before you go onto social media because it can be so public and so overwhelming. But people buy from people they know, like, and trust. So deciding on uh, whether or not you're going to have a, a, a public personal profile is important. I spoke to a gentleman today who, who booked a discovery call with me and he said to me he does not want to be attached to his two businesses. And I said to him, well, it's kind of like cutting off your arms because, um, you know, how are we going to get to know you and choose you over someone else? Because people buy people. And although social media is really cool, at the end of the day, people actually want to connect with people at a deeper, more meaningful, meaningful level. People are more likely to support a person than they are to support a brand. Um, so it is incredibly, um, incredibly important that you decide on that level to at least understand how you're going to set up your personal profile to be able to safely and effectively use it, which is really important. You've got to know your ideal client and intimately. <laughs> so this is super important because if you don't know them intimately and you just kind of know them, well, it's going to be difficult to please them, right? So you've got to know their likes, their needs, their wants, frustrations. You definitely have to know their objections. I didn't put that one in there, but it's super important that you know what their objections are because we need to handle those objections in our marketing when we are on Facebook. So whatever it is that they're going to object to, we've got to be able to um, handle that in our key messaging online. But we do this so that we know how to talk to them. So we know how to connect with them and we know how to solve their problem. And we basically know how to make them happy and please them. Now, number three, and this is one of the most underrated things, honestly, like if you do not do anything, just do this. Go and stalk your competitors. This is one of the most underutilized things. But if you go on Facebook and have a look at your competitors or look at people that you aspire to be like on Facebook, you most certainly are going to learn a thing or two about what it is that you like or, di or dislike and what your point of difference is so that you can bring your point of difference to the forefront so that you can stand out over and above them. So if you're an accountant um, and all the accountants out there are going, I'm an accountant, I do tax returns. You wanna make sure that you go out there and you say something different because we all know that accountants do tax returns. So but why should I choose you? And this is why we go and we stalk our competitors, not so we can copy them, so we can make sure that we can create a stand out Facebook page with stand out content. So number four is we want branding consistency. And when we talk about branding, we talk about two things. And the one is the initial graphics. So, you know, we want to make sure we're talking about, you know, your fonts. You've got two fonts and you've got, you know, no more than three colors and maybe like black and white or gray. Um, and, you know, I use Bitmojis and I've got sort of a cartoon that I use. Um, and though that's your, your branding, like your graphic visual branding. And you want consistency on Facebook with that and across all platforms. But more importantly, what we also want is, is from here, and that is our key messaging. We want to make sure that there's key messaging across all our content, across our programming, across everything that we do, um, so that we can become memorable and not flaky or fluffy. Flake and fluff does not work in social media. Number five is another S word, so have a strategic plan. Instead of just going and shooting shit everywhere and hoping for something to stick, it's a case of going, um, it's a case of going, how much money do I need to make? What can I do to make it? What am I going to do to get people to buy it? So what happens is, is everyone goes, I want to do this and I'm just going to go get everything for free and I'm just going to spit all over social media. Uh, and then they go, it's not working and I'm adding value and everybody told me to add value, but it's not working. I don't understand because they haven't gone and worked out from the end, what are you hoping to achieve? What is your overall intention? 
your overall outcome and what am I going to do to get people there? And R&R, &R, and that's not rest and relaxation. Uh, it's about reviewing and responding. We do not go onto Facebook to do, just to go on to the next thing, go on to the next thing, go on to the next thing. Uh, we go on, we create content, and we go back in there to, re to respond to everyone that has commented. Um, I can be a bit bad with that because sometimes I get hit, but the ones that are, are not tire kickers, you most certainly want to be responding to them. And then you want to make sure that at the end of the week, you are reviewing what is working and what is not working. Because if it's not working, you do not want to be wasting your time. Do not waste your time doing something because someone told you that it would work. If it's not working, it has to change. So you have to review what it is that you're doing. But there's a couple other bonus um, R's. And that is you've got to be able to give, uh, give and get re reviews and referrals and recommendations. And you've got to maintain a good reputation online as well. So a couple of extra R's there, which is super important. And number seven, which is my personal favorite, get them the hell of Facebook. Um, you know, I absolutely love Facebook, but I'm not silly. Uh, if Facebook goes down or if it ends tomorrow, uh, we don't want to keep our customers on there. We want to make sure that we have their email addresses. Uh, and Nick has said this, the number one rule of a website is to make sure that you get their email address. Well, on Facebook, it's not to sit and have a long-winded conversation about this. And believe it or not, I learned this, this trick on Tinder, believe it or not. Whereas if you have a conversation backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, the person is actually likely to go, get, go cold and not to take you seriously. However, if you say, after one or two backwards and forwards, okay, let's have a phone call. Hey, let, let's go for a coffee. Hey, would you, you know, what, like more information? They take it a lot more seriously. And I learned that from Tinder, but yes, from a relationship coach. And number eight is have a professional profile. Um, you know, people are gonna stalk you. So if your process is to go and stalk someone else, believe it or not, everyone is stalking you too. And people just don't think they are. But you need to go stalk yourself on your phone, stalk yourself on your business page and say to yourself, if I did not know myself, um, if I did not know, if I was a stranger, how would I look? If I didn't know me and I didn't know what I do, how would I look if I scrolled through my personal profile, through my business page, through my group? What would it look like I do? Would I look professional? Would I look like I can charge a high, for a high priced item? Or do I look flaky? How do I look? Because if you look dodgy, um, your, your customer, your competitors will get your clients. All right, so let's handle the A word, okay? Algorithm. Everybody freaks out about the algorithm uh, because they go, oh, it's the algorithm. It's the al ever-changing algorithm. And it's like one of those things where everybody just, you know, blames it on something. You know, the poor old algorithm gets, gets the short end of the stick. But I love the algorithm, okay? Because if we understand that the algorithm is just a prediction and that what you're putting in and what you're engaging in and if you set up your profile right um, and whatever you give attention to, it's going to match you. Okay, just like Plenty of Fish, another online dating. It'll go, you like this, you like this, I'm going to match you and I'm going to start putting you in front of each other. So the algorithm does work. And this is exactly how the organic, uh, organic reach works. And yes, every now and then it changes, but it's kind of like your kids, you know. They're kind of like the values are the same and every day they change, especially if you've got three teenage daughters like I do. Um, you know, they're up and down and all around. But at the end of the day, the values and everything are still the same. And as long as we understand that, um, it's good. Whoa, my little cursor's just jumping around here. Cool. So here it is in a nutshell. What is the algorithm? Well, it pre predicts and determines or chooses what goes on your new news feed. So we actually have to pay attention to that algorithm. It's kind of like SEO in Google world, okay? So it scans all the input and content on Facebook. So believe it or not, it's the biggest stalker, Facebook, biggest stalker. And then it determines how interested you'd be in seeing that. And then it predicts what you best like. And then it considers how you would respond, respond to it, engage. And this is why it's incredibly important that you use your fingers. And I always say the power of the finger, go and like and comment and share because what you show interest in is telling Facebook and the algorithm what it is that you like and it will start matching you. So when you start putting in content and when you set up your page and you say what it is that you do, um, well, guess what? It's going to start matching you. Like will, like will attract like and you'll suddenly it'll start coming up in your newsfeed. 
you can start training your newsfeed. So if you start showing interest in um, a fridge because you want to buy a fridge, guess what? All fridges will come up for the next six months. <laughs> so if you're looking for a dog, even though you've bought a dog, like still dogs will keep coming up because you've been looking at dogs. So you want to make sure that you are conscious of what it is that you are putting in. Constantly entering the right data into Facebook because that is how it connects you. <laughs> Tinder, many, time, many years ago. Yep, for me, it was four years ago too. So <laughs> I met my partner on Tinder, so that's a true story. So it does work. Okay, cool. So social versus salesy, okay? Because everyone goes, I want to sell to everyone and I don't want to be spammy and I don't want to bother my, my friends and family and whatever. Well, if you know how to firstly post on your personal profile um, and you know those privacy settings, you can decide who sees what, which is really cool. Um, but really, if any of your family members don't like you talking and showing passion about what it is that you do, I mean, look at Nick, he's on Facebook all the time. He must have lost all his family and friends by now. Um, <laughs> no, just joking. But, you know, if he hasn't lost his family and friends and if I haven't lost my family and friends and if we're exuding passion about what it is that we do, um, and we come from a hard space of servicing, not selling. Well, people are going to love that about us. And guess what? They'll either unfriend you, unfollow you, or block you, depending on that. And they're not your ideal clients anywhere, and that's okay. But we shouldn't be over, overly salesy. There definitely needs to be a good mix, okay? And believe it or not, some people, I won't mention any names, but some people forget that they still need to sell from what they're doing. So we'll leave it at that one. Everyone's thinking it's me, it's me, it's me, right? Um, but yeah, even though we're doing all this stuff, it has to end in a sale. If it doesn't, well, it's not working. So it needs to be, uh, it needs to be social. It is social media, okay? So that's the good news. The good news, it needs to be social. So it just needs to be like conversational. It doesn't have to be long form. It can be short form, which is really cool. Um, success stories. So these are all the S's. Share your success stories. People want to see the results that, it, that you get from other people. Uh, they don't want to be hearing from you all the time. They also want to be hearing from everyone else and seeing what everyone else is doing. Statistics. Some people have analytical minds and they love the statistics. And that's why today I started with the statistics at the beginning to handle any objections that potentially you may have as to whether or not Facebook is your platform of choice. That is why I entered those statistics at the beginning to handle the B2B question, uh, to handle the, link, the LinkedIn, all those other questions that people are thinking. I, that's why I did that. Then we want to share your services that you do. And so many people forget to share what their services are. They forget. So a lot of people don't even know what it is that they're selling or what they're offering. They just don't know. They just think, oh, that's cool. He keeps sharing good stuff. Don't actually know what he's offering. Uh, so it is important for us to share our services. But when we do it, to focus more on the solution that we solve for people. Okay? And we do that, of course, by sharing our expertise as well. And we want to show social proof. So for those of you who, were, who have been on Tinder dates before, you get to that date and the person's going, me, 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 me. Um, yeah, they're not going to get a second date because it's just me, it's just them, it's no one else. But social proof is about sharing uh, testimonials and reviews from other people about what they say about you because people want to hear that from other people, which is cool. Um, and remember, it's not selling if it's serving, which is a true story. So here we go. Create compelling content which converts. Um, so what is the type of content that you should be putting out there that is going to get you fast and free results? So number one, it's about you. Okay, you are the biggest part of your unique selling point. They want to see you. They want to see your family. They want to see your partner. They want to, it makes you feel human. It makes you feel tangible. It makes, people, it makes it easier for people to connect with you. And what happens is people forget that they are growing their fan base and their friend base consistently. So you might have shared your about story last year, but since then you might have another 200 followers on your page and they haven't heard it. So we have to remember to bring that into our content because people buy from people they know, like, and trust, but they want to connect with you at a deeper, more meaningful level. And that's how we develop a relationship. So share about you. They want to know about your why, your business backstory. You know, um, oh, this, one, this particular story was a franchise. So if you either want to tell the franchise story or your own personal story, but you want to make sure that uh, people want to hear about how you came up with the business name, uh, how did you come up with your logo. Like they want to hear about the fact that you're human, that you made mistakes along the way, that it wasn't all, you know, smell, smell the roses. 
All right. And again, like I said, it's about your services. Um, you need to be sharing your services, but you need to consider who your ideal client is and you've got to create posts around that so that it can identify with the pain of your ideal client and it can solve their problem. And earlier I mentioned that, you know, with the subscription, when you're coming up with a subscription as well with an offer, it, it has to be a desirable offer, meaning it has to be desirable to the person who's purchasing it. Else they will not reoccurringly do it. My dog's food is holistic. It is a 20 kg bag. They deliver it to my door so I don't have to drive and go carry it. Um, and it's holistic and it comes every three months and they let me decide how often I want it to come. So it's a no-brainer for me then to subscribe to my dog's food. And then they go, well, why don't you put the deworming tablet on, get tablets on, which come every six months, uh, and we'll make sure every six months you will get it so he doesn't miss a, miss a subscription. So to me, desirable offer. Great. That's how they sold it to me in their content. It's a done deal. It's a desirable offer. I will buy it. And it's to the right person. So the next one is credibility. So at the first slide today, you would have see, seen that I go, I'm a qualified and award-winning. Uh, social media ma uh, marketer and Facebook strategist. So originally self-taught, but I now do have my qualifications. So I do things backwards. Um, but I went and got my qualifications because I wanted to be able to say that I'm not a generalist, I am a specialist. And, um, and so I can afford to charge what it is that I charge um, to get results. Now, people need to be sharing their credibility. They forget if you've got 20 years experience, you need to say, I have 20 years experience. If you don't have 20 years experience, don't say you've got one month's experience. Say that you've recently just qualified and you were the top in your class. Um, say that you come from a family of electricians and you've grown up with electricians. So that is, you know, that's why you went on and became an electrician. Whatever your credibility is, if you're qualified, registered, experienced, use that credibility. Everyone has it. We need to be sharing that and showing that credibility as well. Uh, social proof, we spoke about this uh, earlier on, but you want to be sharing people's success story, repurposing testimonials, uh, uh, and doing shout outs to other people that you're working with as well. Uh, that gives you social proof as well. So for example, myself and Nick working you know, alongside, that gives you social proof as well. So you want to make sure that you're doing that on Facebook. Uh, and getting testimonials as part of that. They, you know, I call them testimonials, but Facebook's actually changed it now, and they do call it recommendations. So, uh, pleasure, pain, or humor, okay? Um, a lot of marketers will say that they focus on the dream and the pleasure. A lot of people focus on the humor and they're just humorous all the time. But humor ain't gonna feed the family. Uh, you know, uh, memes and constant jokes on your Facebook page, yes, they're gonna get engagement, but they're not gonna help you get a client. So we do just need to make sure that we have a, a, a good balance on our page of identifying with people's pain, uh, selling them the pleasure and the dream, um, and then also uh, have a bit of humor in there as well. But we do need to make sure that it is balanced. Community. So showing community is incredibly important, okay? Showing your involvement in the community. So I'm gonna use an example of a plumber that I work with here on the Gold Coast. Uh, a plumber on the Gold Coast, there's actually quite a lot of plumbers, believe it or not, because I had the contract to go and train plumbers. Um, and, you know, looking at this plumber and it's like, yep, okay, how do you stand out? What do you do? Yes, you've got a bit of credibility and stuff. But he actually plays squash uh, twice a week in a squash club uh, and is involved in that club. And once he started sharing the clubs, you know, that they've got ongoing memberships, I mean, this was before COVID, saying, hey, I'm playing squash, nice squash club, come and play squash here if you like. And he started doing it on his Facebook page at least once a week. Guess what? All the other members of the squash club started going onto his Facebook page. They actually remembered he was a plumber because when he pitched up there, they forgot that he was a plumber. And the squash club ended up employing him to actually do the contract there once he started showing and involving himself in the community. Uh, so any community, you know, I, I, I foster dogs on death row. So if you want to show that online, although I haven't done it in a while, but, um, you know, in the last year we have, we have done it. People are going to connect with you at a deeper level. If, it's, if you're into dogs, if you're into cats, whatever it is, 
So you just want to show community involvement because that's also going to help you to expand your reach. Now, number eight is involving your audience. So this is the one that I spoke about beforehand. Um, and you want to involve your audience in your marketing. So it's a case of, um, sorry, your dinner's in the microwave. <laughs> Um, so you want to make sure that you involve your audience in your marketing. So you want to say to them, like, I'm getting signage on my car. Do you like this or should I choose that? I'm about to write, write a blog at the moment. Would you like me to create content around this or content around that? Or do you want to have run a Facebook poll and go, okay, who, who's going to, um, is a Facebook poll? You know, please poll. Do you like this or do you like that? Because again, if it's inviting people um, to connect and showing that you are also interested in what it is, that they're interested in. And again, we spoke about your offers. Um, and offers are obviously specials, referral programs, competitions, and believe it or not, you can run organic competitions successfully. So competitions on Facebook without paying for it. You've just got to follow the guidelines. And believe it or not, they've actually relaxed the guidelines on that, uh, which is super cool. And then, of course, it needs to be trendy and seasonal. So right now, you know, Mother's Day is coming up. Um, and what I find quite surprising is people are creating offers around Mother's Day right now. And it's a, I think it's a couple of weeks away. I don't even know when it is, but it's a couple of weeks away. But the problem is the postage right now, they're probably not going to get it because there's a, there's a back-end postage. And I actually discovered that through uh, my Coffee Pods people who said to me, like, if you want to make any changes to your subscription and to your Coffee Pods, you're gonna to have to let us know now because there's actually the postage has slowed down with COVID. So we also need to make sure that if we do have, um, you know, trending and seasonal that we do do it timely. We don't go the night before on Facebook and go, hey, why don't you buy a, a voucher for Father's Day? Because chances are they've already bought something for Father's Day um, and you've come in too late. So you do wanna kind of make sure that, it's, that you're talking about things that are trendy and seasonal um, and that you can build up and bring their awareness to it. And I normally say it's about six weeks, but because if it's a postage thing at the moment, I'd extend that to about eight weeks. So we're constantly pointing people towards those things uh, that are trending or seasonal. Uh, what you can do though, the little tip for that one, is you can go in and you can, this is something you can outsource and get your VA to go and put in those seasonal things like Anzac Day and schedule that into Facebook a year in advance. So we will go in and schedule in Christmas, Anzac Day, Mother's Day and all those and do those out for the year. So even if you did get sick uh, or forgot to do some content, at least those things would be in there, um, which would be really cool. And number 11 is pitching. And you know, some people go, yep, I like a pitch. Some people don't like a pitch. But you know, my pitch is, you know, I empower business owners with the skills and strategy to successfully manage their own profiles, to get clients, create opportunities and grow their business. I mean, that is a sentence that I lead with all the time. And whenever I respond to somebody on Facebook, I use that. But what, that happened, what, what has happened is I have now established myself as the go-to person for that. And it becomes memorable. So in the olden days, it would be your elevator pitch, which you would do at um, your elevator pitch when you went to a networking group. On Facebook, you have to have pitches ready to go. So if somebody's asking for your service, and I'm going to show you how this works, you want to make sure that you can effectively communicate what you do in a sentence and in the written word. And it's not fluffy, it's not confusing, and people know exactly what it is that you do. Okay, so when you structure a post, this is like, this is the, the structure that I follow, like seriously. The first two lines are the most important, and they have to stop the right person from scrolling. So it has to be a soapy, dramatic headline that stops the right person in their socks. Now, it really annoys the crap out of me and anybody else on Facebook uh, when people go dot, 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 and because they want you to push see more. Okay, they're trying to trick you to click it, to open it, to read it. No one likes to be tricked. Um, just put a captivating headline that is, that is like in the first two lines that's going to stop the right person. And I normally say non-negotiables are the best. So I spoke to a lady earlier today. She's doing a Mother's Day thing. Uh, it is a, uh, she's offering a book for over 50 year olds. And I said to her, say, are you looking, um, is your mother over 50 um, and, and looking to feel great this Mother's Day? Because it's going to stop someone with a mother that's over 50, it's going to stop and get them to click on it. 
So make sure that if it's non-negotiable, so for example, if it's a location-based thing and it's on the Gold Coast, are you on the Gold Coast uh, looking to buy a bicycle? Okay, non-negotiables in the sentence, looking to get a good deal on a bicycle. You wanna make sure the first two lines are the most important. You wanna connect then the second sentence, so even if you just did four sentences, second sentences connect with and identify their pain point. So are you feeling you know, stressed and overwhelmed? Um, or is COVID getting to you at the moment, being stuck at home because the gyms are closed, you can't get out and exercise? And then number three is solve their problem, showing your expertise or social proof and credibility. Well, you could come, buy this bicycle, go out, get some fresh air, get your mind off COVID um, and, um, and get fit and stay fit and healthy and sane during COVID. And then your last one is a call to action. So people always stop it there because they think that a call to action is salesy and it doesn't have to be. It just basically, you need to make it easy. So if the offer expires in a certain time, you have to let them know it expires in a certain time. It can literally just be a soft something that, in, that requires people to take action. Okay. So Facebook lives, because video marketing, of course, is super important. So let's just see, are there any other comments? I think we can go to the chat box. Any comments here? Can I ask you? Let's have a look here. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, the slides are done. I can't do that. I missed this on a mobile. Let's say Facebook notes or posts or both. Facebook notes or posts or both. Not sure about that question, Martin. If you want to just elaborate, can I ask, can you make a poll of the business page or only on group pages? So, great question. A poll on your business page, you can poll two things only. However, in a group, you can poll heaps, which is um, really weird but it's really cool for groups. But on a business page, you can only poll two things. Okay, Martin, thank you. Uh, Facebook, no. Fa uh, so on your page in Facebook, you go to your about section. So if you go to the about tab on your Facebook page and you look to the right, if you're on a desktop, it'll say story. There's a space for you to put in a landscape picture and to put in your story. And I do encourage you to put in not just your business story, but start with the first three to five sentences of hi and introduce yourself and tell your story and then go into, hey, this is my business. This is why I do what I do. This is what I'm passionate about. And then in the last one, these are our services and these, this is how you can contact us. So that's how you access it on your business page. On your personal profile, it is personal profile, about section, details about you, about you. All right, cool. All right, so Facebook Lives. I don't know if you've heard about it, but a lot of business coaches go, oh, if you want to grow your Facebook page, do a Facebook Live every day for 30 days and you will grow your Facebook page and you'll make sales and you'll live happily ever after. Well, the answer is hell no, uh, because this can actually make or break your uh, online relationship uh, and you can actually destroy your branding, okay? At the end of the day, number one is you have to have intention or the S word is strategy. So if you're going to do Facebook Lives every single day, what is the financial gain of you doing that at the end? Now your financial gain, it could be catching email addresses, it could be selling them into a program, it could be getting them into a discovery call, but what, it, what is that? You have to have that intention at the end or else there's no purpose, okay, no point. Secondly, you've got to make sure that you build a relationship with your audience. So you have to know all those fundamentals. If you don't have all those fundamentals in place and you haven't done a stalk and you don't know your avatar, there's real, no real point, okay? Also, uh, who's on your page? Like if you're selling dog toys and you've got people that, are, that have asthma and allergies on your page because they're your families and friends and they belong to an asthma and allergy group and they don't even have a dog, then it doesn't matter how good your content is or how good your lives are on that page, it's just not gonna work. Number three is it's gotta come across as being genuine. So, you know, I really struggle with Facebook lives because I don't like wearing clothes, it sounds weird, but I like wearing my gym clothes. I don't really like putting on makeup, it really bothers me. But at the end of the day, people kind of know that this is how I am now, and that's super cool. You know, I scrub up every now and then. 
Um, but number four, and this is one of the most important ones, is that it has to be worth the watch. If someone takes the time to click on you and watch you, and you bore the crap out of them, and you go, um, um, I don't know why I'm here, and they're looking up your nose, um, and, and it's absolutely the biggest waste of time, they will never click on you again, which will destroy your engagement, destroy your reach, will destroy everything. So, you know, people, Facebook Lives do not have to be a part of your strategy. I've got clients where it's not part of their strategy. Um, and not everyone wants to do it. There's some introverts on here right now are probably calling under the seat because they do not want to do Facebook Lives. And that's okay. We can come up with other video marketing strategies for you. So number five is subtitles. I don't know if you've seen uh, that Facebook has a new face. So for some of you, you might have gotten the opportunity to click over and experiment or use that new face. And I did it the other day by doing a Facebook Live uh, and, and um, a, a Facebook Live using the new Facebook look. And guess what? There's a little icon that you can tick, which says subtitles. And I could not believe it. I just thought, oh my gosh, I didn't even know that I could tick or untick that little feature. Um, but you can. So in the new feature, make sure that you go through it and read it. And yes, it looks a bit confusing and weird, but just take your time. It's okay. Um, and have a look. And there's a little box that you check and subtitles go there. And they got my South African Australian, which was really weird because I've used Otto for Zoom and I've used a couple of other ones and uh, I still need someone to go in and edit it. So keep your eyes out for that. But subtitles are super important because a lot of people are multitasking. Uh, they could be cooking dinner or doing something else and they can't watch or listen. Uh, so they need to be uh, reading, which is important. Number six is just follow the post, the, the post structure that I spoke about beforehand, meaning that don't just do a live and say nothing above. You have to follow that post structure. They want to know at the end, they're going to want to know how to contact you. Uh, at the beginning, they're going to need to be evoked. Uh, they're going to need their curiosity evoked enough for them to stop and click in. So do not say nothing. Those first two lines are super important. Why should they click in? Like what's in it for them? Number seven, point people to the live beforehand. So you can do this a couple of ways. You can either set up a Facebook event. Um, so you could set up a Facebook reoccurring event and point people to the live. So, you know, Nick's kind of adapted now and he's doing that now where, um, you know, it's a Facebook event and then you can share it out on Facebook as well and let everybody know that the live is coming. People can register, they can come on, but that's going to get more people in there. And of course, having all that other software to do that as well, like Zoom registration link is really important. Um, so people can register for that. So they can be sent a reminder either through Meetup or Eventbrite or through Zoom uh, or through your own email marketing system. So it does depend on, on what you are using. And of course, keep that process simple. Um, but that way you can point people to the live. Second, another way to do it is to be consistent. So showing up at the same time all the time, which is really cool. So for example, I worked with a, a, a life coach who showed up every single Friday night at seven o'clock for half an hour to answer questions with, with relationships and everybody knew that she was on and she built a following by consistently being up on there all the time. And of course, reminding people that they're there. And the other thing now is that you can schedule lives in Facebook. So you can go into Facebook and 24 hours beforehand, you can schedule the live. And what will happen is for the whole 24 hours beforehand, the live is sitting there and there's a little countdown timer and it actually says, get a reminder. So you can click on it because how many people forget that a live is going to go on? Like you, you just forget if you're not, if you, if you haven't got registration software, you're just going to forget that the live is on and you're going to go, oh, I missed that. So you want to make sure that you're scheduling those lives uh, and um, sorry, that you, that you get those reminders and all those people will get those reminders. So when you go live, they can click on. So it's, it's about pointing more people to that. Number eight is repurpose the crap out of it. I hate doing uh, a, mil a million, a million, a million things and redoing things. Take something that's really good and repurpose it. So if it's a great Facebook live, think about where you can put it. So right now, uh, Nick has got his, his uh, minions behind him and they are all taking this right now and they're putting it into watch parties on Facebook so we can reach a wider audience. Okay? So he's taking it, creating it as a watch party so more people can come in and watch it. But you could send it out in your database. You could put it in your newsletter. If it's great content, you could even sell it as a low price offer. Uh, you could put it on another social media platform. You could have it turned into a blog. You could put it together as a program or series. You could offer as a giveaway or, or a sale. 
Uh, any other questions there? I don't see any other flashing. So I'd imagine that I'm talking lots and everyone's taking heaps of notes, which is really good. All right, cool. So any questions, guys, please feel free to write in before. So here we go from Debbie. With a watch party, with a watch party, do questions appear everywhere or just the original? Um, are you talking about the comments? So if somebody is asking a question, yep, cool. Okay, so the same thing would follow, and this is why it's important to have a call to action in your live, because you would say to them, comment below. I also always say, please at me, because if you now have gone and posted this watch party in three other groups, if they just go and comment, you may or may not get that notification, which means you can't respond, and that's a potential lead loss. So I always train people on how I want them to, to respond. Please could you action tell Girardi so I get that notification and can go back in and answer that question. Okay, cool. All right, so here's a little bit of your review and insight. So, okay, I want you guys to be a little bit brave here and I want you to go in and, you know, comment in the chat box. Who of you check your insights every seven days, 28 days, or answer what are insights? <laughs> um, but let's be honest with that and just put it in the chat box below just to let us know uh, if you are oh, I can't get my cursor back no worries let's have a look Nigel you can always go back and watch these lives inside a business owner smashing it online okay so reviews and insights so here we go so guys, be brave, put it in there, and let us know if you have never even looked, seen this before, okay? But with your insights, you can actually check back, I think it's a year, a year you can actually have a look at your insights, but mostly the two features that are there are seven days or 28 days. So for me, I literally go in, it takes me five minutes, I'm that quick on it now. So part of your ongoing strategy to make sure that it is working for you is making sure that you go in and review your insights, okay? So every seven or 28 days, you go in and have a look. And this over here, is really cool because this is actions on page. You can have a look and see who's clicking through to your website, who's clicking through on your phone and who's actually looking at your action but your action button clicks. So for this particular client over here, their phone number isn't on there. The action button click is to actually book an appointment. So this client can actually see when people are clicking through their website, or when they're actually clicking through to book appointments uh, online. And then you can actually see whether or not they're following through or not. Because if they're not following through, there may be a, an error with your funnel, like your customer journey, with your online booking system, or even with your messaging. Okay, let's have a look here. So there's your overview. Uh, you know, there's a whole bunch of here which are like important, not so important. But my favorites are... The overview, the first one that you go to, that is the most important, like literally go through and just look at that each week and see how you're progressing and also then analyze or think about why it's changed from last week or the last 28 days. But I love, my couple of my favorites are uh, the overview, the actions on page, videos. If you're running events, most certainly you need to be looking at that events feature. Um, and people, so this particular one on the left-hand side here is showing you people, uh, and then posts. And if you've got a shop, obviously you wanna be looking at your shop as well. Um, so you wanna go in here and you wanna have a look at when people are engaging, what time of day. Uh, just remembering, Facebook can only give you insights on what you're inputting. So if you go in the, at the same time every day and post, it will only give you insights on that because so it may be an idea to go in and sporadically try a few different things to see what's working or not working. Okay, let's have a look. There's also pages to watch. So I bet you didn't know this. You can go and stalk other people's pages. So at the bottom, you can go pages to watch. They do not know it's happening. So you can go and see and what are their top performing posts uh, and how many likes they're getting and it compares to you as well. And in here, uh, you can have a look as well. This is a bit of the overview. Uh, and here, this is your people. So your fans, your followers, the people you are reaching and people that are actually engaging and make sure that it is actually your customer avatar. So yeah, cool. So how do these actually happen? Okay, we're getting there guys, we're getting there. Stay with me. Um, but how do these actually happen on Facebook? So on your personal profile, 
on your business page or in relevant groups. And I highlighted that because if they're not relevant, you're wasting your time in there. Okay? They've got to, there has to be potential in there or it's a waste of time. And there are, there is etiquette and there are rules and you do have to follow them. Else it's considered spamming and it will not work. But in your personal profile or your business page or in relevant groups, you want to be posting your compelling content, which we spoke about beforehand. Okay? And when you post compelling content, you're going to get likes, you're going to get shares, you're going to get comments, you're going to get inquiries. And guess what? You have to respond. And you've got to pay attention to who those people are. And then you've got to get them the hell of Facebook. So either onto a call or into your database and you've got to do it ethically. Ethically. Very important. And then you have to follow up. So number two is comment and engage in relevant groups. And again, following the right rules. Okay, so in groups, there are people that are looking for help. So for example, a person may go, hey, listen, I'm looking for help to grow my business and I've got no marketing budget. And somebody who knows me, like a raving fan or a cheerleader will go, hey, action told you righty. And I've got to be able to notice that in a notification and then go in and respond. And my goal then is to get them off. So there's my little pitch. I empower business owners, how to manage their own profiles. You can check out how I've helped other people. If you'd like more information, book a call. We want to get them off. And if they've seen you, seen your content, and I always say that if you touch them in their special places, guess what? Uh, they will book that call because you've been consistent online. And the third one is collaborations. So for example, myself and Nick right now, this is a collaboration. We have the same ideal clients. We're not in competition with each other. We can do a joint venture. We can do lives on each other's pages. We can do guest interviews, guest posting. Because if you have the same audience and you're not in competition, there's an opportunity there for both of you. But your call to action is vital in collaborations. The amount of people right now that are doing podcasts, which is a collaboration and a great way for you to grow your personal and business branding, well, guess what? It's a social media platform. You still have to grow that podcast. You've still got to get the right people on there. And guess what? You've still got to sell something at the end. So what is your call to action? And at the end, it's got to be easy for people to be able to find you. So if anyone has any questions with regards to the how to get those free leads, like how leads actually happen on Facebook, I'll be more than happy to answer that for you. Oh, I've got really weird things happening here. Any other questions there? I have got one that's come through on Facebook. I'm not 100% sure, but I'll try. It's from uh, uh, John Huckstep. says, can your posts be detrimental to other social media flatworms? And if so, how do you avoid it? So uh, maybe other social media groups or something like that. Uh, can your content be? Can, can your posts be, uh, be detrimental? to other social media profiles or pages, I guess, and how do you avoid it? So may, maybe that's about, um, uh, you know, if you're posting the same things of, uh, on, yep. okay, on cool. pages. Yep. Excellent. So um, I always say that it's important to respect each platform. Okay, if you follow the rules of Google, uh, if you follow, why do I have a red line everywhere? Oh, gosh, I'm like scribbling all over my stuff. Um, <laughs> um, it's the night time. Um, okay, so when it comes to social media platforms, we have to respect the platforms. So if you do everything right by Google and tickle Google's boxes, then uh, you will come up higher. If you do all the right things by Facebook, you'll come up higher. If you do the right things by LinkedIn, you'll come up higher. If you do the right thing by Instagram, you'll come, come up higher. And it's exactly the same with the audience. If you do the right thing by the audience in LinkedIn and talk the right language and have the right offer, the right thing will happen. So yes, by all means, uh, your Facebook content that you have on, on your Facebook page, yes, some of it may be relevant to Instagram. So for Instagram, it's going to be all about the pictures and the hashtags. If it's relevant to uh, LinkedIn, it's going to show your expertise and it's going, to have a, um, it's going to be short form because it's a lot shorter. The hashtags are more topical. Uh, no, sorry, less topical and more um, like category based. They're actually quite boring. Um, so you want to make sure that whatever content you do take, and yes, if you copy paste it and put it elsewhere, that's okay. 
but you have to make sure that it respects that platform. So it respects the audience that's viewing it. The offer is the right offer. The hashtags are the right hashtags and the right use of the hashtag. The images are the right images. So yes, by all means, you can copy it there, but you do need to still go in and tweak it to make sure that it does tick their boxes and follow their guidelines. Because if it doesn't, so for example, all those people who post on Instagram and then just allow it to come across to Facebook, that's actually stunting the algorithm in Facebook, regardless of the fact that Facebook owns Instagram now, hashtags are not a Facebook thing. Facebook is about stories and it's about, it's about words and language and that's how we search. Instagram is about topical trending hashtags and that's how we search as hashtags. So you would have to go into Facebook, remove those hashtags and you would have to generally create a lo longer content and more, more social content in Facebook because it is a little bit more social. Okay. Which is better, group or pages? Should I have both? Oh my gosh, uh, Nikki, that is like a ginormous question to ask. And if you like, I'm happy to discuss that a little bit further through a uh, discovery call. So if you want to jump onto my website and book a call with me, I'll go into that with you. <laughs> the more groups and pages you have, the more work you have. It is so much more work. Like if you think one page is hard, try two or three groups, it's even worse. So it forms part of your income producing strategy. It depends on what your business is. It depends on how you want to run that funnel. It depends on how you want to nurture those people. For me, I, a lot of people have public groups and they nurture people through public groups into, into paid platforms. I actually go against the grain. I don't have a public group that I feed into my paid platforms. I actually just use Facebook and feed them straight into a monetized Facebook group, which people have to pay to be in that group to get my content. So, you know, I, I've done things differently, but guess what? It's working. So uh, it's not one size fits all. It's not cookie cutter. So unfortunately, if you do do those like little three day, five day challenges where they can show you how to monetize your group and everyone's doing the same thing and following the same formula, well, it doesn't. It works differently for each business uh, and for each audience uh, and also for how much time you have to spend on it. Uh, if you don't have a lot of time, I wouldn't be encouraging you to have three different groups and trying to funnel and send everyone everywhere. I spoke to a lady the other day, five groups. Um, and I said, well, how do you make your money? And she said, well, I don't. I do this and I do this and I add value and I give, give people input. And I went, well, how do you make your money? Oh, well, I don't. I was like, okay, no strategy. So good news is um, you most certainly have to have a page. You just, you have to have a page. Like a page is public. You have to have a page. You got to tick the box boxes but whether or not you'd have a group's another story we'd have to go in and see if that forms part of your strategy okay last question and then and nick's going to choose a winner um am i still writing like red lines everywhere it's just so weird okay hey, chantal yes let's have a could look. you explain could, chantal can you hear me yes can you explain what's on the screen right now winner winner chicken dinner oh i've got you've got the 14 day Facebook content. Yep, program. that's what we're winning today. Oh, yep. okay. Yeah, cool. So this is what the winner is going to win today. So Chantal, is there a rule regarding pictures with text not being as effective as text outside the picture in a post? Okay, so Chris, um, there is a tool and for the life of me, I've gone blank. It is the evening. Actually, it is Facebook's tool. It's Facebook. I'll get it for you and I will post it underneath the video uh, when we finish. There is a tool where you can see if you're doing Facebook advertising, yes, your text has to be minimal. So in Facebook advertising, your text has to be minimal. Um, and Facebook's got its own tool where you can actually upload the image and it will tell you if it's yes, no, or maybe. Um, but with regards to just posting content, organic content, no, it isn't, which is great. So you can put as many words as you like in there as possible. Uh, but branding consistency is important. So, yes, I, I don't know how so, Nick is right. choosing the winner. Yes, yeah, sorry. Was there another question or was that you, Nick? No, I said Nick so much. I was cute and organic content. I just had a bit of the past, I think. Yeah, okay, excellent. Um, all right, so winner, winner, chicken dinner. So what is on the screen right now is... Um, this is what we're giving away tonight. Nick said, what are we giving away? And I said, well, I'll give them away my 14 day uh, Facebook content program. And we actually just run that in person recently. And our winner is actually on this call right now. So Daryl Bancroft, he won uh, the 14 day Facebook content uh, challenge that we recently just ran. 
so well done to him. So go and stalk his page out for sure. But I'm giving away the email series of that, uh, as well as access to my VIP classroom. So this is the private Facebook group that I have where we run weekly training uh, where your questions get answered. Uh, weekly training on a Monday at one o'clock. Uh, it's $97 a month and we're giving away a year's subscription into that group. So a really, 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 really cool prize. Uh, and Nick is a fun, fun way to choose who that winner is. I have indeed. So what we'll do is we'll stop your screen share and uh, we'll whip over to uh, my screen share. And... So I'll thank you Tamara for sharing that for us. And also while Nick is doing that, carry on Nick. Uh, for those of you who do want to book a call, uh, please go onto my website, chantelgirardi.com.au. And if you don't want to book a call, but you do want up-to-date information, I would love it if you could subscribe. Uh, you'll immediately go in a nurture sequence where we will be giving you out, uh, I think what, like email two is how the whole Facebook funnel works. So, um, and how to grow your page, like nine ways to grow your page without paying for ads. So make sure you subscribe on the website. Uh, you'll also get all our webinars as well. All right, thanks, Nick. All right, well, let's uh, let's share this uh, tool here. Can everybody see the spinning wheel? Yes, yeah. we can. Awesome. So, what we have in here are the names of people that participated here tonight. That we're here tonight. So, um, this one is called. This is a good app, actually. So, if you're running uh, draws and things on um, on your uh, webinars, uh, this one's called WheelOfNames.com. And uh, all you do is you just paste all the names uh, into the uh, uh, right hand side and then we click spin the wheel. Now we do have a rule about this is that uh, the people who are here are the ones that win. So if you've disappeared early, you don't get to win it. So if, if the person's not here, we'll just draw it again. Does that sound fair? Yes. Cool. Okay. All right. So to spin it, we're just going to tap it in the middle. So Chantal, you just press the middle here. Oh, I did that for you. <laughs> Goodness. Cause I'm just doing red lines everywhere. <laughs> and... Oh, that was so close. That would be Nikki Bruce. Now, is Nikki still here? Just... Uh... Yeah. She is. Awesome. Excellent. So, um, so what prize was that, uh, Chantal? So, 14-day Facebook content program. So, every day for 14 days. Um, they will get, be getting a, uh, an email of me giving them an instruction of what to do on Facebook to get more engagement. Uh, and then on top of it, we've given, as I said, the a whole year's worth of weekly group training in my mastermind group. So that is uh, on a Monday at one o'clock where you can ask your questions, show up or not show up, but we answer the questions and those recordings get placed in there as well, uh, which is really, really, really cool. So Man. only my clients get access to that. Um, else, alternatively, it is $97 a month to become part of that group. Excellent. And you've got one more prize, have you? No, that was it. The two oh, prizes got okay. it at one person. I know. Oh, look at that. Hey, this, is, uh, this is scarcity, isn't it? Which is great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There's one off. <laughs> All right. I'll just share the main screen again. Uh, and I think it is... Uh, that one there. All right. I'm just not allowed to do lots today in this game. <laughs> Too many screens happening. All right. And yeah. for for those of you that uh, uh, want more of this and uh, want to keep in touch, um, we have a uh, uh, a membership portal there which you are welcome to join. In that uh, membership site, there's a, a range of things, including uh, for those that have got WordPress websites. Uh, we have a whole lot of Word, WordPress uh, video tutorials. So if you wonder how to upload an image, how to uh, uh, how to how to write a post, all that sort of thing, and uh, you know if you've been handed over a website or you're just starting, it's a great place to get some uh, easy, quick tutorial videos. No, none of them are uh, any longer than two or three minutes, so they are very quick. Um, the other thing that we pop into that uh, membership portal as well are the apps that you saw at the beginning. Uh, plus uh, a lot of the ones that we've done uh, right back over the past two years there and there for uh, with uh, easy access for you to go and find we've got a search facility in there so if you think what was that uh, free images 
uh, app that we talked about. You can just click on images and up they'll all come. So it's really quick, it's really simple, it's really uh, easy. So um, because it, uh, we're, we're still building this out and uh, we're really just launching it at the moment, if you join today, uh, you get it for a dollar for the month. And after that, it's uh, $27 a month. Uh, you can come and go at any time you like. Uh, this is an introductory rate of uh, 27. It will be going up to 47 once we've got it fully finished and populated. So I uh, would love you to be there. And uh, we will be having Q&A times and things like that as well too. So, so go and have a look at it. There's, uh, and um, it would be great to um, have you in there. Um, other than that, we also have tomorrow morning, if you want to mark in your diary uh, tomorrow, um, uh, every Wednesday morning at uh, 10 a.m. we have a um, Q&A session, the Positive Business Online Q&A. Uh, that's on Zoom, same sort of format. It's no agenda. You can just come in, ask a question, bring an issue, uh, look for a recommendation for an app or, or, or whatever, and uh, can't guarantee we'll have the answer, but we will certainly have a discussion and we'll point you in the right direction to, uh, to help you. And generally, people walk away with that uh, from some idea. So it is an open forum. Anyone's welcome to uh, join. And um, I'm hoping that we might chat, pop the uh, link into chat. If not, um, just go onto uh, Facebook, onto Business Owners Smashing it Online, join there and we will post the, um, uh, the link there. Actually, JM has just put it into the uh, chat box now. So if you click on that, you can come register and come and join us 10 o'clock tomorrow. So that's it for this evening. That is Business Owners Smashing it Online live on Facebook, oh, sorry, live on Zoom. We actually forgot to stream it on Facebook today, which we normally do. So I'll upload the video there uh, tomorrow so that uh, if you missed it or you had to leave early, then um, you can uh, view it there. So um, thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks, Chantal, for a uh, absolutely um, information-packed session. Someone said this is the best webinar they've ever been on. So uh, <laughs> obviously hit the button there on the, or the nail on the head. So uh, thanks for sharing with us tonight, Tosh and Tom. I know you're not a night person, but you did fantastically. Thanks, I found my words in the end. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Oh, oh, sorry, I meant to give you the link to uh, for this here as well. If you want to join the membership site, it's posbiz.in forward slash join. So again, thanks if everyone for showing up tonight. And uh, next week, same time, same place. And we have uh, someone by the name of Steph, uh, Oh, I can never pronounce her last name. What's her last name? Z oh, oh, I have no idea. Let's call her Steph Z. Steph Z. <laughs> She's probably watching this. She's going to kill me. So Steph Z is going to be uh, sort of... Uh, what we just branded her. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've just seen her uh, topic come in, and it's uh, all about um, sort of creating funnels, branding, uh, so what is it? It's the top five psychology-based and strategy-driven brand hacks to effortlessly connect and convert your audience at whatever price you want. So that's next week uh, with Steph Z. Uh, <laughs> she's going to kill me. <laughs> so uh, she, she's awesome, actually. So we've, we've had some discussions with her. So well worth coming along to uh, as well, too. So everyone, have a great night. Thanks, Chantel. Thanks, everyone, for showing up. And we'll Thank see you, you again next week. So yeah, thanks Mel again for stalking me. Thanks, Nick. Talk soon, yeah? That's all good. We'll catch you later. Thanks for turning up. That's good. All right. Well, I'm heading off now, too.